Jacob Ladder is one of the sickest rapids in the world. The danger is real, even though it is roadside, even though we have really good safety, the danger is always there. It is one of the hardest stretches in the world to run. It's big. It's so big. It's like, I saw it on the videos, like from the last year and stuff. But when you're here, it's just like way bigger than, and it's also more water this year. So um, I haven't done it with this level and I want to do it today and I'm scared. Andy Bruner runs some serious waterfalls and steep rocky creeks in his home country of Austria. Bruner arrived a few days before the start of the North Fork Championship. Almost no one's training at the moment. It's just like a couple of people, even the locals are not doing it. So there must be a reason and that's, that makes me even more afraid of it. The locals don't really run this section of the North Fork on a regular basis. Especially when the flows are this high. The Payette is the most savage river I've ever paddled. Specifically to this river is, is extra dangerous. Course is clear, safety is in place. If anything happens, it's really hard to get somebody out of there. We have been really lucky. We've never had a big incident here, and we want to keep it like that. In total, the North Fork of the Payette River features 15 miles of continuous Class 5 whitewater that includes the top five, the middle, and the lower five. And that's where you'll find most of the locals, like me as I struggle to make it down the easiest stretch of the river with the water level cut in half. That is pretty exhausting. One more rapid to go. It is the best continuous class five whitewater that you'll find pretty much anywhere in the world. And um, being able to have the event here this coming weekend is gonna be super rad and it's super fun to have people all from all over the world be able to crash down these rapids and have some good lines. Alex Worry is giving younger brother Hayden a high five on the start ramp. Yeah, so the way the course kind of goes is you go off the Red Bull ramp, um, you got about 10, 15 seconds before you hit the first major part of the rapid called Rodeo Hole. Like the Olympics of white water, it doesn't get, you, it doesn't get any harder than this. In 2013, Canoe and Kayak Magazine presented Rob Lesser with the Lifetime Achievement Award. This legendary kayaker pioneered a number of first descents, including the top two sections of the North Fork in 1977. With the advent of plastic boats, that was really what made it possible. When I first ran the North Fork, it was in a holoform, which was the first plastic boat. The four other people I was with were a group from Kentucky and they all had fiberglass boats. They did it once and they never returned. Shortly after that first ascent, Rob Lesser and other Idaho paddlers fought to save the North Fork of the Payette River against a proposed hydroelectric project. In 1978, Idaho Power proposed putting it in, in, in tubes. Two separate uh, sections would have been put into tubes, the whole river, Anyway, that was that was the uh, proposal, and we fought it because. But we were a new entity on the scene. People kayaking the North Fork. Oh gosh, no, you know, very few people were doing that. Are you ready to get it on? North Fork Championship 2018 begins now. Nowadays, the best kayakers in the world come to Idaho for the North Fork Championship to race down Jacob's Ladder and the golf course to see who has the fastest blades in the water. There's a lot of big waves and holes that are trying to stop you and you really need to find your way through those waves and find your smooth line. It's not only about paddling hard but also about having clean lines. So it's complex, it's hard and uh, it's the best race in the world. The competition started with 137 men and 18 women with each division looking for a $5,000 first prize payout. Yeah, so Reagan, who's one of the organizers, um, is she's pretty set on making sure that we have equal pay. Um, it's also been changed to the World Championship, which is the first time ever. Make some noise for the people that bring us together every year. Reagan Bird and her husband James created the North Fork Championship, and this year, 
the Association of Whitewater Professionals declared NFC 8 as the world championship. 160 racers, 19 countries on the gnarliest course on the planet. It was unbelievable. The competition works like this. Kayakers race down S-turn rapid in the top section of the Payette River, and after day one, the field got cut to 40 men, creating a bracket where the fastest paddler raced against the 40th fastest and on down the line, with the fastest run advancing to the finals. The one drawback to the new format came when local Idaho paddler Hayden Voorhees got eliminated, despite having the 10th fastest run in the semifinals. But the new format also encouraged more kayakers to show up because the top 10 racers from the prior year no longer received an automatic berth into the finals. The new format definitely had some ups and downs, but one of the upsides is that it really allowed uh, a lot more uh, European paddlers to feel like they could come over and have a chance of doing well. Like Austrian Andy Bruner, who advanced to the finals along with defending champ Annie Olsarasolsis and 18 other professional kayakers, including perennial favorite Dane Jackson. Once I realized that even though I got third last year, I wasn't safe and able to race on Saturday no matter what, I was definitely like a lot more nervous because this is by far the most stacked field of competitors in pretty much any event. So knowing that you had to race them all and potentially get paired up with some of the fastest kayakers from the first day, a lot of pressure was on, but I'm pretty fired up how I did today. In the finals, kayakers bombed down the toughest section of the river through Jake's with the added difficulty of gates. The athletes needed to make all the gates to have a shot at winning this event. It's so much different. Uh, it's a lot harder. It's like if you're not on your like if you're not doing your best, then it's going to be really hard to make your make all the gates. It's incredible. It is one of the hardest stretches in the world to run. And uh, I come from California on the Kern River. And we have some hard stuff, but uh, this is really hard. I also wanted to share my experience as a journalist covering this event to show what it's like to work on deadline. At 3.30, I left the North Fork Championship and headed towards Crouch, where I could get a cell signal that I would need to feed my video back to the news station. Then I set up an edit bay and frantically worked to get this story on the 5.30 news. And this is my final edit from the North Fork Championship before I knew any of the results from my favorite edit bay in the world. Well, the biggest crowd in the history of the North Fork Championship cheered on the world's greatest kayakers today as they blasted down the toughest rapid on the Payette River. Six on your side, Steve Dent takes us to the high energy event. Welcome to the Extreme Kayaking World Championship at Jake's on the North Fork of the Payette River. This year it's been a lot different than every other year that uh, North Fork Championships has happened. The water level is quite a bit higher than most years, not quite as high as 2017, but just as stout. The gates this year are super hard to make, and yeah, it's like, it's the real deal. In the second round, Englishman Joe Morley threw down a sick run, making all the gates. Look at both of them so fast. That's the fastest line I've seen. He was pooping faster than Brexit. Dane Jackson followed with what looked like the fastest run of the day. And don't sleep on Austrian Andy Bruner who became a fan favorite. I don't think I ever saw Andy this week without a smile on his face. He had a goal of making it to the finals, and today he threw down a clean run. Oh uh, yeah, that's awesome. It's even better than I could imagine. Uh, I think with making all the gates, that's like at least top 15, which is just like, it's amazing. I'm, I'm super happy. The women received equal prize money in the North Fork Championship, and while their times may have been a little slower than their male counterparts, the women's intensity, drive, and resolve to get through this course <laughs> definitely deserve equal pay. Guys are so impressive. Just to have the uh, fortitude to even do this, and their skill level is unbelievable. It's also a world gathering right in our own backyard. 
that showcases the rivers we have here in Idaho. It's awesome to see. It's so sick having over like about 19 countries from all around the world to my home river. Steve Dent, six on your side. Dane Jackson took back his crown as the king of the North Fork. Joe Morley finished second, and Thad Dennis rounded out the podium. Andy Bruner, he finished sixth. Kayakers are like a big family. Everyone's so nice to each other. Norwegian Marianne Sather earned the title of Queen of the North Fork, with Pavlina Zasarova in second and Jen Trimes finishing third. There is no question. This is the creme de la creme of those, the people that are racing in the North Fork today. That's, that's the best in the world. And, and that's what we need to realize here in Idaho is that uh, basically we have a world resource uh, for recreation and uh, you know, it's right there for, for everybody to watch and see. And I'm sure a lot of the spectators are wondering how do these guys do it? This isn't something that I have any gumption to float. It's, it's an incredible rapid. I mean, I can't imagine what kind of training goes into this um, for them to be able to participate in the North Fork Championship. Whitewater kayaking takes some serious endurance, and it's a full body workout. Upper body strength and core muscles working in unison gives kayakers the power they need to make every stroke count. And balance is key for paddlers to be able to ride the features down the river. So it's about a lot of training and being in shape and having good fitness and being able to also understand that if you get in trouble, you can get yourself out of it. Kayakers also use several different paddle strokes, and it takes time to learn how to read a river to figure out what the hydraulics will do in different situations. <laughs> Those kids that you're watching roll down are extremely experienced. And then the other part is the evolution of equipment. Big volume boats and carbon fiber paddles have given kayakers the confidence to push the boundaries of whitewater kayaking even farther. <laughs> and the North Fork Championship has a rock star feel to it. Another part of the North Fork that I would love is that it gets to bring me back to Banks and Crouch and just this whole area of Idaho, which not only is it roadside one of the best sections of whitewater in the world, but also I just love how beautiful Idaho is, how nice the people are, and it's just such a perfect spot to kind of bring all these different international paddlers together and just have one hell of a weekend. Whoa. Kayaking still remains more of an underground sport, but the success of the North Fork Championship is undeniable and the leaders of this sport hopes to move kayaking into the mainstream media. The best of the game, you know, I, I want to see this on TV because it's so good and so crazy set, and I mean, it deserves it. It's amazing, man. I just drove in from Colorado and it's Perfect weather. When you're in the river, nothing else matters. It's just floating down with the water. Definitely like one of my favorite things to do because it's, you're not safe. You only have two runs and a lot of times you can do 15 practice laps and miss a gate every time. So it's a lot of pressure to nail those two runs, but that's what makes it so cool. I think it's my fifth time in Idaho and every time I come here, I'm, I'm in paradise. I love the place. The people are super nice and the rivers, they are insanely good. They are big water, there's creeks and it's super easy access and people take care of their rivers here, so it's really nice to see and uh, I love it here. I want to come back every year. People don't realize how the little subtle things that are happening out there in the river are affecting where you're going to be on that river and at a level like we there was today, which is a high level, it's unpredictable. There's just no question. It's wild and chaotic and, and we use the word manky because you just never can tell what's going to happen to you. I should mention that Adrian Levkinek decided not to go down Jake's after she qualified for the finals. And I, for one, can't blame her. I don't think I'll ever run that section of the North Fork of the Payette River. But overall, I love kayaking because it's really fun, it's getting exercise, and it's being out in nature. So I'll see you guys later. I'm going kayaking. Yeah.